1983, an action show about a crack commander unit was put on TV to the entertainment of countless viewers. We loved its light tone, clever plans, and plentiful shootouts and car chases. Today, with Hollywood digging deeper still to avoid actually thinking of a fresh idea, they survive by remaking things that don't need it simply because the fanbase is already there. If you need a summer blockbuster, if less campy source material has already been exhausted, and if you can find someone who doesn't look anywhere near as intimidating as Mr. T, Maybe you can call your The A-Team. Okay, so in spite of that intro, I want to make it absolutely clear, this is two hours of pure fun. It's one of the best recent action movies I've seen. Now, as someone who loved the show when I was younger, I want to help and reassure fellow fans, they pay a lot of respect to the original show. They reinterpret and update a few things Let's be honest, if Face was acting the way he was in the 80s show, we'd be calling him a Metro. All four of them get awesome intros, and plenty of heroic moments. The four are really well cast, Neeson looks like he was born with that cigar in his mouth, and the white hair actually kinda suits him, it, it works for him. We've got Alias as Will Tippin as Face, and he absolutely pulls it off. He's genuinely charming, and comes off as a cool, fun guy. You know. If the movie ended with him walking out of the screen, you'd probably go hang out with him. And I know in advance that I'm gonna absolutely butcher the poor guy's name. Charlto Copley? I don't know. The lead from District 9, who on occasion slips into his South African dialect, really works as Murdoch. You know, he comes off as a loon and he's kind of playful. And while something like that could be irritating, it really isn't. And honestly, Jackson as B.A. Baracus does pretty well. He does really well at most of what he's asked to do, which is maybe not that much, but still, and he's certainly got loads more charisma than The Rock or Vin Diesel. Is Vin Diesel outside my house? Oh, that's a tree branch rustling a bit in the wind. I'm sure he's used to that. Go on, Mark Vincent. I'll act a piece of wood. The acting is all really good. It was kind of fun to see Patrick Wilson, you know, the night owl from Watchmen, be so theatrical. Beale and every other female in this is largely eye candy, but we've seen her do this tough chick kind of thing before, and we already know she does it well, and she doesn't let us down here either. Everyone is well cast and fit their roles. Essentially everyone in this is a badass, at least on off, and that does get old on occasion. Also, while I'd say two thirds of the dialogue works, they seem to be going for like, you know, the original Iron Man movies level of witty banter, and that leads to them trying too hard with some of the lines. But it's really not that bad, it's better than Iron Man 2, trust me. The comedy does tend to work, and there are times in this when it is hilarious. The action is non-stop and pure awesomeness. This keeps a very fast pace and it's never overwhelming. Also for how much action there is, it never gets old. The action is immensely surprising and satisfying. This does use some shaky cam and the editing is very intense, but I gotta say it really didn't bother me. It's, it's much more unobtrusive than anything by Paul Greengrass for example. The plans are brilliant, and it's so much fun to see them gather the equipment and the materials. Also, for how much action this fits in, there's also plenty of build-up, plot that, in spite of twists that hold up quite nicely, doesn't manage to confuse us, and genuine arcs and character development. The effects are plentiful and almost invariably excellently done. There are a few instances here and there where you can kind of tell it's CGI. There are also a couple of brief sequences where they kind of seem to forget that we're interested in the people and not just the spectacle. You know, the spectacle really doesn't matter if there aren't any people around that we care about in the middle of it. You know, just a handful of shots where you're thinking, okay, but where are the characters? With that said, there's very little that's gratuitous in this. Almost everything adds to the plot or the characters. Being that this is written by a guy who used to be an actor, and the guy behind Swordfish, Hitman, 
and X-Men Origins Wolverine, the guy's filmography reads like the obituaries. I was quite pleased with the script. I don't know, maybe Joe Carnahan deserves most of the credit. I would very much like to watch his other movies. The only one I've seen is his the higher short, Ticker. That one is excellent, though. But yeah, all in all, a very well done Hollywood popcorn summer blockbuster action flick. It's completely black and white and it's not going to make you think, but it never claims to and it genuinely is a satisfying movie going experience. They clearly put a lot of effort into making this, not just roping us in with a good trailer, it's a fun movie. Anyway, that was my spoiler for review. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Okay, show of hands, who loved how they said the end part of the original show's intro right as the credits were starting? I like that they showed a lot of respect for the show, but honestly, early on, it seemed like every other line Hannibal said contained the word plan in some way. I think they did really well on giving B.A. and Face a genuine character arc. You know, they genuinely develop throughout the film as does Face's relationship with Beale. And the message with B.A. was, you know, obvious, of course, you know, basically saying, it's fine to use violence as long as you're fighting for what you believe in. You know, what else would you expect from a Hollywood mainstream action flick? I would say that comparatively, we didn't really get inside the heads of Hannibal or Murdoch. And maybe in Murdoch's case, it's good, because who knows what's going on in there. Seriously though, if they do make a sequel, and they could, though I'm not entirely sure if it's the plan or not, I would maybe like for the focus to be on Hannibal and or Murdoch. I really like how this starts out showing how they met, then skips ahead some years, and then shows them, you know, getting payback. I honestly think this was a really good way of doing a movie based on the A-Team. The film also sort of works as a prequel to the show, you know, the show could begin you know, after the movie ends. Part of the reason it can move so fast is some of the stuff we already know, like Hannibal faking his death with the cigar. You know, many audiences now know that, you know, there are those drugs that can make you go into cardiac arrest for a while. Okay, who else thought of Darkman there at the end with Neeson's voice saying, where am I, and luring the bad guy closer? Also, did anyone else notice how when Neeson got to be, like, threatening, I think it happened at least once or twice in this movie, he gets to sound like when Darkman is threatening. Interestingly enough, it actually happened to a greater extent in Kinsey, you know, that one scene where he breaks up a fight, I won't say between who, so as to not spoil it, than in this movie. I liked how they worked in the Pity the Fool thing with, you know, Pity and Fool. The 3D gag was hilarious. The film was, of course, completely black and white. The CIA were always slimy. The ex-girlfriend is a stone-cold bitch. It was all her fault. It was a mistake. And she winds up getting back with him, sort of. Helping him, at the very least. Anyway, those were my thoughts on the A-Team. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.